This episode is sponsored by Brilliant.org. SpaceX Starship Updates and Kennedy Space Center Update. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. The last few days were crazy fast and as always there has been a lot happening in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates since last episode, Boca Chica has as always been very busy, but today I especially want to talk about why SpaceX is doing certain things. Elon Musk had some time for reporters after the recent Crew Dragon in-flight abort test and it gave insights into exactly that. If you watch my episodes closely, you might have noticed that in the past few weeks we've seen a lot of this, and this, and this. SpaceX is testing tank construction right now and they've already built one test tank recently and made it explode as well. The results of that particular test were mixed. On one side SpaceX reached the needed flight pressure but on the other side they did not reach their desired safety margin. This is exactly the problem the Mark 1 tank section had as well when SpaceX did a pressure test with it. It ruptured below the top dome and thus failed SpaceX's standards. Exactly the same thing happened with the latest test tank. It ruptured below the dome. As said in the beginning, Elon took some time to answer a few questions for reporters after the recent in-flight abort test and NASA Spaceflight.com was there to record the unscheduled interview. And as so often when he gives interviews about basically anything, people start asking questions about starships. And as always, Elon was willing to give some answers too. First of all, he emphasized again that complete reusability is very important for the Starship project. On the Crew Dragon for example, as we saw on Sunday, the trunk and the second stage are still thrown away and that is a considerable portion of the rocket. He said that with complete reusability and quick turnaround, space will be opened up for the average person. Just keep in mind, that's us, unless an astronaut watches this episode. In that case, you rock. He said that the primary structure of Starship right now is the main concern. He specifically talked about the difficulties faced by SpaceX right now in Boca Chica. He said that the main problem right now would be the domes. Apparently it might sound easy to make one but it isn't at all. Also the interfaces between the domes and the interstages and skirts seem to be a problem. SpaceX is testing all sorts of different techniques and doesn't seem to be able to find the right one just yet. These are just a few examples of the different bulkheads that were built only recently. Obviously SpaceX is always using the same material. Our latest info here would be half an inch thick 304L stainless steel made by Newcastle. SpaceX used flux core welding which normally is a good option for outdoor welding. Now that SpaceX is moving the production into tents and windbreakers more and more, gas shielded welding can be utilized more often. Another aspect for different types of domes would be the pattern used. A dome is a dome, right? Well, not exactly. The pattern in which the parts are assembled makes a lot of difference when it comes to strength and distribution of pressure applied. SpaceX has been experimenting here too. If we compare the two domes on the recently made test tank, we can see that the patterns look different. On one dome SpaceX set the welds apart. On the other one they lined them up but made them stronger with additional welds. So even if it might look simple at first, there are lots of variations to be tested and tried out until you find the one that works best. Musk also said that SpaceX is making considerable progress on the Raptor engine. He stated that they are right now at serial number 20. The famous Christmas Raptor was serial number 17. This of course is just a rough guess, but this would mean that in around 3 weeks SpaceX produced 3 engines. He also said that each serial number has design improvements and that this will stay this way most likely all the way up to serial number 50. He was also looking ahead as well and mentioned again how critical it is for SpaceX to achieve orbital refueling. He said that SpaceX's work on docking with the International Space Station is extremely helpful in this regard. So it is likely that Starships will use a similar system to what Crew Dragon uses for docking. In fact, Elon said that work on the Crew Dragon docking system has helped SpaceX to solve this problem already. And as he promised on the interview, he also visited Boca Chica again to solve some of the problems they're facing with the domes. Here you can see a picture of Elon Musk from that Padre's live cam where he's inspecting one of the latest domes. Mary aka Boca Chica gal made some very nice footage of the SpaceX worker crew feeding the coiling machine in the ring tent. 
Here you get a good size comparison of the stainless steel coils and a good look at the process of operating such a machine. The stainless steel is fed into the machine. At first the machine straightens the sheet and then bends it into exactly the angle needed for the defined diameter of the ring. The bent metal then runs along the wheels on the ground until the ring is fully formed. Then it is being welded together and is ready for stacking. This process then is repeated until the outer hull is finished. She also took a short clip of a large liquid argon tank. An inside source recently told me that SpaceX is moving away from dual shield flux core welding. In wind protected areas you can use MIG welding, which produces less dirt and smoke in the process. The typically brushed welds we saw until recently that can be confused with ground down welds should become less and less as this is typical for flux core welding. The weld needs extensive cleaning after the welding process. Critical parts by the way are being TIG welded by SpaceX which increases the overall strength of the weld. It produces zigzag welds typical for the technique. So to sum up this Starship update, SpaceX right now is focusing on the domes and on improving the weld strength further. Again, a step up in quality. The next Starship will be lighter, stronger and hopefully more flight capable than Starship Mark 1. Kennedy Space Center Update I'm pulling a few news together here as there has been a lot happening recently at Kennedy Space Center when it comes to infrastructure. Not only did Blue Origin continue their work, SpaceX is also busy continuing their work on the Starship launch mount. Let's start this one with Blue Origin. Their facility at the Exploration Park is continuing to grow. With the main production buildings almost finished now, there is one building of particular interest at the moment. Presumably their new vertical assembly building, this structure has constantly been growing over the past few weeks. We can now already see the gate frame and the slide structure for the gate itself. This, no doubt, is the place where Blue Origin will assemble their new Glenn boosters before they roll out towards the launch facility. In this picture by John Winkop, we can already see the heavy lift under the building's roof needed to lift and stack parts of the rocket and the finished booster. Even though we have not seen a single test of New Glenn yet, Blue Origin already has a large amount of infrastructure at the Cape. A very different approach compared to SpaceX and Boca Chica. And on we go to SpaceX. Bear with me, this news is based on only one picture and it has a rather bad resolution. And on top of that, I do not have a proper credit. If anyone knows who took it, please report in so I can give proper credit. Now what we see in this picture is the Starship launch mount at Pad 39A and the picture was taken at the recent Crew Dragon in-flight abort test. So it shows the pad at a very recent state. What we can see here, even at first glance, are two large metal poles that have been erected in front of the pad. Without proper comparison, it is hard to tell, but they look like they have at least a diameter of one meter, maybe more. Two more segments are already laying next to the pad and it looks like they will be stacked on top of them. Looking at the flame diverter's location, these grey poles should be located just slightly in front of the starship when it's sitting on the mount. So it could be either the foundation of the pad itself or presumably a launch support structure. But I might have found what we're looking at in one of SpaceX's Starship animations. Do you see these two black poles right under the Starship launch pad? It looks like just the right spot. So then this would mean that what we can see in this animation is very close to the real deal and that SpaceX is building exactly that at Pad 39A. Now back to that picture of the current state. We can also see a large grey pipe going under the pad now. This definitely looks like a shielding for smaller pipes. Presumably propellant, oxidizer and maybe even water for a sound suppression system might run through this large pipe. The pipe is coming directly from the small fuel farm on the right side of the picture which is another indicator for a supply pipe. In general we can say that SpaceX right now is making very good progress with the Starship launch mount at Pad 39A. And this might be an indicator that they are planning to right from the beginning not only launch out of Boca Chica. Will we see serial number 1 or 2 launch out of Kennedy Space Center? It's always good to have more than one option. This is not only true for the space industry, but also for your daily life. Being able to utilize knowledge and skills is a key advantage in all sorts of situations. To improve your knowledge, why not make a New Year's resolution? Today's sponsor might have just the right solution for you. Brilliant.org is a problem solving based website and app, which makes it easy to get into some of the most complex topics. Brilliant can surprise with unique approaches and intuitive learning methods. 
Math, for example, is one of the most difficult topics to understand as soon as you dive deeper into it. Brilliant, though, goes step by step. It makes you understand the basics before throwing complex formulas at you. Their math course takes you from a rather simple introduction all the way to some of the most complex problems and on the way it makes you understand the connections that are essential for you to understand the bigger picture. Brilliant also has brand new interactive content that makes solving puzzles and challenges even more fun and hands-on. To make that resolution happen and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up for free to get access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 to join up through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So solve problems with brilliant.org. Link is in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Is SpaceX close to figuring out the dome problem? And will the launch mount at Pad 39A be a copy of what we saw in the Starship animation? As always, tell me in the comments. And again, we're at the patron shoutout and I commend you for sticking with me. Either you really like the show or you're a patron and you want me to say your name. Patrons are essential for the production and funding of What About It and without them, all you just saw would simply not be possible. So show some love in the comments and maybe even consider becoming a patron yourself. And as always, we have new members on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Stefano, Rogelo Figuerora, Bob Graham and many others. You rock. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It? and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Complex formulas. Formula. <laughs> Stand the connections. The connections. Rogelio Figuerora. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Flight capable. Capable. Capable? And that, 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 that. I've did it! I've did it! There we go. I love you. Mwah.